The Barrel House is brought to you by you, the listener, and those of you who have chosen to support the show over at patreon.com slash barrelhouse, especially our Whiskey Legend tier patrons, Greg, Katie, Lauren, and Joe. Without you, the show wouldn't be possible. Hello, and welcome to The Barrel House. Hello, and welcome back to The Barrel House. I am your host, Joe Kane, and this is the podcast where we take our whiskey journeys together. No matter what level of experience you are, you're in the right spot. Today, we're going to come back strong. Some of you will notice it's been a couple of weeks, a couple of few weeks. I've been very busy working, thinking about how to proceed with the show, how to squeeze it in. I think I've got a plan. And I'm happy to be back, and I thought no better whiskey to come back to than the one, the... Personally, my mother of all whiskeys here, the Ardbeg Oogadol. Oogadol. This is, as many of you know, what I consider like my favorite achievable, reasonable, kind of always have it around whiskey. It's a little on the steep side. It's just outside of that. Maybe Ardbeg 10 is that more for you. Um, this, though, is the one for me. Um, some of you might recall when the first episode, when I discussed Ardbeg 10, how that was the first whiskey that got me into whiskey really. And it was because I had only really had Jameson and a couple other Irishes, maybe some Jack because that's what everybody always has around. And I kind of had like a specific idea of what whiskey would be like generally. And then I had Ardbeg 10 and realized you could have this huge variety. This, this, the the landscape of flavors with which whiskey can reside within is so much bigger and so much brighter and so much more interesting than you would ever know if you just stick to your big brand mainstream whiskeys. Ardbeg 10 was that open to me. I talked about how it has this sense memory to me to like when I first bought my house and I went to the tag sale and got this smoker my friends and I stumbled and fumbled through smoking a brisket in this very cheap $5 rusted out charcoal smoker. And it was kind of a ridiculous experience, but at the end we had this great brisket and a better memory. And I associate that because of the smoke and, and meatiness of Ardbeg 10. I connect those things in my head every time I have it. Ardbeg Ugadal is like the big brother it is the turned up, the dialed up, the this is for real version of Ardbeg 10 to me. Now Ardbeg definitely has a, a distillery flavor profile. This fits in that profile for sure. But being cherry cask finished and um, actually might even be totally aged in cherry casks. Now I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it's totally aged in cherry casks and having that aggressive higher proof and cherry cask and Ardbeg for flavor profile really marry well to this awesome bottle. So I've talked about it a bunch. I have to do the due diligence here before I get started on the pour, the whiskey itself. I have to thank all of you who support me over at Patreon, especially those of you who have stuck around during the past couple of months where I've had some spotty coverage with episodes because of like the real world around me. I promise I'm working on getting better at that and hopefully you can stick it out some more. Um, this should be the beginning though of more regular programming. That's the word I'll use, more regular programming. And also I'm gonna be asking a few people to come on for some slightly different format episodes that will still be whiskey centric. Um, and hopefully we can get some yeses on that. So patreon.com slash barrel house. That's where you could support me. That's where you can help me out. That's where you can help make this stick around even when I'm bad at it. Sorry, very sorry. Um, so let's get into the pour. This is Ardbeg Ugadol. This is no age statement, single malt whiskey from the Ardbeg distillery in Isla. The tasting notes on the front say treacle bacon and bonfires and 
This is 54.2% alcohol by volume. Non chill filtered. Of course, who wants that? Who wants chill filtering? This thing is leggy and oily and delicious. And I know I've talked about this bottle a couple of times. Um, I've never done a full episode on it though. It has just come up in other episodes because I didn't want to dig into it. Like it's the Holy Grail whiskey for me. It is the perfect whiskey to price point. Whiskey quality, flavor profile, nose, palate, all across to price point for me. This is right up my alley. This is the one for me. And I feel like, I always felt like covering it would be like covering the best before I should. But time comes for everything. We must proceed with this. It has to be done. On the nose, the nose is really strong in this. A lot of people who dig into this nose for the first time are shocked at how strong the nose is. Even compared to Ardbeg 10, the nose on this is really big and bold. Heat hits you first right away. There's some like uh, non-cured tobacco, like fresh, like aged, but not cured tobacco. A little bit of leathery. The things that stick out to me the most though, the things that really pop, that I really like about this. Sure, it's a little salty. I do like that salty brine kind of thing that Ardbeg and the Islas have, but it's also got some really dark roast coffee, like really dark roast coffee. And it's got sweetness to it. The sweetness that is not really super present in the other Ardbeg, or the Ardbeg 10 anyways. There's a little bit of sweetness in the Ardbeg 10, but this has like, once your nose gets through the smoke, this has some chocolate hints and uh, some honey and brown sugar hints. It's got almost got, it's got vanilla hints to it. I mean, it really does have some real sweet notes on the nose. And I really like that because it's balanced so well. Whereas your other art bags tend to be a little bit, a little bit, depending on the what, some of them a lot, some of them a little, leaning to the overly savory side. This is a little of both in a very pleasant way. And if you thought the nose was good, ooh, what a good palette. That is such a good, balanced, complex palette. It's warm but not spiky. The alcohol is definitely there and it definitely hits, but it is not spiky or aggressive or mean in any way. It's just warm, like a nice hug. It's a nice hug. It is, oh, it lingers. That does linger really well. I get salt, dark chocolate, caramel. There are citrus notes, a little bit of orange peel, not like, like acidic, oily citrus notes. Um, maybe a touch of like burnt marshmallow. Like I get a little bit of sweetness in there that almost, that tastes like, not like a nice, perfect brown marshmallow, like the eight year old stuck the thing in the fire and let it light and then shook it a little bit. And then you yelled at him and then he blew on it and blew it out. And now it's like this charred briquette, like that marshmallow. Still sweet, very fiery, very charcoal and smoky. There's, some of that tobacco on the palate. Not a lot though. You really have to dig for it. It's just smoke and peat are really overwhelming on the palate. They're really huge. But all those sweet lighter notes that come across it along with the salt really leave for a nice balanced evolution. The finish is long and oily and it lingers. It does a nice, the thing I like about the finish on this, 
some some whiskeys and you've heard me talk about them before like the finish just drops and you're left with like one note left very quickly and even if that one note lingers you get one note for a long time this does a nice thing probably largely in part because it is so oily where the flavors of the palate kind of peel off one at a time it does leave you with salt and smoke at the end salt and smoke are the things you get at the end that last the longest but you kind of you can kind of feel the cocoa and the, or the dark chocolate and the marshmallow and the citrus and all those flavors peel off kind of one at a time and leave you left with what remains until you just have salt and smoke and it is not right away it takes a little bit but it's really fantastic and then when you are left with salt and smoke it is a pleasant salt and smoke it was like it's like being <laughs> salt and smoke uh it's like being at a campfire on the beach that's kind of what the very last lingering flavors are it really is so good it's very very good um these bottles, I think the MSRP on them is around 75 or 80 bucks. They're usually around a hundred, uh, about 80, 80 to a hundred for me here at 80. It's a buy all day long at a hundred. It's a buy, but maybe not like always have one in your bar. It's like buy one a year or something like that at a hundred, but it's definitely worth buying at a hundred over that. You start to get into questionable territory of value and that becomes a personal sentiment. If you want to spend 120 on it, you can. I would, I'm, if it went up to 120 and that was what you had to pay for it always, I might buy it once a year at 120, but I would not go over that, I don't think. Um, it's a really great pour. I really like it. Um, so yeah, this is, this is like my favorite bottle. I go back to this all the time. I always have it in the bar. This is like, a solid whiskey for I want to explore pick apart but it's also very good for like I just want to sit back and enjoy a glass and I don't want to think about it I just want to experience it and enjoy it uh it's a great whiskey if you like Pete this try this and if you try this let me know and you can let me know on Instagram TikTok Facebook all the places all the links are at barrelhousepodcast.com and I would appreciate any feedback you have there. Email at barrelhousepodcast at gmail.com, barrelhousepodcast.com for all your links. Episodes are up there. Merch stuff's all there. Get all your stuff there. Patreon.com slash barrelhouse to support the show. And until next time, drink whiskey and be merry. Take care. The Barrel House is written, produced, and hosted by Joe Kane, and it's a proud member of the Earglue Media Network. Views and opinions expressed on this show belong only to the mouth they came out of. And as always, please remember to drink responsibly. Slanjavat.